G'day everyone, you found the champ dog. And boy, oh boy, do I have some fun stuff to share today. So, it's another Demi Control list. Surprise, surprise. So this list is by M Nameless Thing from the Kalheim Qualifier. It's a bit over a week ago, I think now. So I've mentioned this list a couple of times in my channel. In the last couple of uh, videos I've done, I said that there's a Demi Control list, uh, Running Sharks, and a lot of two mana spells that I wanted to try out and put on the channel. Well, here it is. This is the list. I hunted it down, and I freaking love it. I've not had this much fun playing Demi Control probably ever. The only, t the only times I've had this much fun playing Control that I can think of is back in the Grixis Bolus days. You know, flipping a bolus to bring back your own bolus, and then a couple of turns later, stealing your opponent's Nissa and beating them to death with their own best cards. It was pretty dope. Felt good, but uh, I have not had so much fun playing Control since then. I love this list. I think it's fantastic. I don't know if it's necessarily the best build of Demir, but it's certainly my favorite so far. So, if you've seen my Demir Control videos, something you've heard me say repeatedly is that I think more attention needs to be played paid to the two drop slot. So let's just take a look here. We've got four Essence Scatter, four Dwari Disruption, three Eliminate, four Heartless Act, four Drown in the Log, just all of the cheap disruption. We've got Didn't Say Please instead of Neutralize to turn on Drown in the Lock, which is also something I've mentioned on the channel and uh, actually something one of my viewers uh, mentioned in the comments and I thought it was a good idea and I never got around to playing with it and then Nameless thing beat me to it, and now everyone saw it was a thing. I think I mentioned COVID Go Blue uh, played a version of this deck recently on his channel in Best of One, but this is the original Best of Three list you're seeing here. Um, yeah, so just all of this cheap two mana interaction, which is really important against, for example, specifically Gruul, because they're playing like cheap aggressive creatures, like a lot of hasty things with our Brushfire Elemental and Questing Beast. Um, and you really just need to start taking things off the board quickly and being able to double spell quickly in order to maintain tempo. And the double spelling and maintaining tempo is also really critical against rogues. And those are the two best and most popular decks in the format. So it's really important. And that's why I've stressed it so much. You know, I, um, even I've valued Blood Chief's Thirst a little more highly than I otherwise would because it's a one drop that lets you double spell sooner. Uh, even though it's a little bit awkward being at sorcery speed and often actually costing four. But yeah, we've got all of this two mana interaction. We've got some Maze Mind Tones as well, which is obviously a great card. There's the Singleton Mystical Dispute. I don't know how I feel about that. Obviously, it'll be useful against rogues. Um, and it's a little easier to cast than, say, Neutralize. But a um, little bit of a head scratcher. As I said, this list was made for a tournament, so it could have been that they're expecting a lot of rogues in the tournament uh, and then look at this top end four voracious great shark singleton shark typhoon three sublime epiphany and a lock new serpent so seems a little bit confused right but like four voracious great shark i already think that's fantastic i loved this card when it was spoiled for my choreo i played with it in demi flash uh during a choreo standard which didn't quite get there and i ended up often reducing uh, the numbers of this because it was just a little expensive and a little clunky at the time but I was never happy to quite cut it out of my deck so I always tried to keep coming back to it um, and if you've been watching my channel for a while you've seen would have seen that I was playing a fair bit of is it sharks in our best of one a little bit earlier uh, built around the if you remember at the start of Zendikar Rising uh, standard before Obnath was banned the Demir 8 shark lists that ran four Voracious Great Shark and four Shark Typhoon. I've loved playing with this card. He is a little pet card of mine. I really love him, so I've been so happy getting to jam him. The single Shark Typhoon is, uh, you know, it's there. You can, it's a look. It's a great versatile card. Why wouldn't you have it? There's three more in the sideboard, so you do have access to the full four. But I, uh, you know, the list would have been a little bit top heavy otherwise. Um, and there's obviously this um, mix of things, and you've got the single lock mix open, which can just close the door on games really quickly. But the real spice here is Sublime Epiphany. So this card is obviously really expensive, but like, God, it just does so much. It does so much. 
Um, I'm sure most of you know what the card does. But uh, the basic game plan for this deck, shut, shut things down in the early game. Kill off creatures, counter spells, you know, scry, to hit, scry draw, hit your land drops, um, try to draw some cards, stay ahead, keep shutting things down until you get to five mana and then bang, counter something, play your own threat, start beating them to death with sharks. Sometimes you'll end up playing this to counter a spell and having to trade it into a blocker and just getting a two for one, but like, hey, you just got a really nice two for one. But then what you're trying to do in the late game, once you have a voracious great shark down or a big enough shark typhoon token or a lock me serpent, sublime epiphany, bang, counter a spell, make yourself another massive creature, draw yourself a card, maybe bounce something that the opponent's played and just start swinging for the fences. It is such a fun way to win. Um, I've ended up with like three copy, you know, three copies of a great shark or a lock me serpent, and like people just scoop. Because I mean, what can you do? And like even copying a moderately sized shark token can be really good. I played a game recently. I think it's the one that I deleted the footage of, but I could be wrong. Uh, where I made a three-three shark token, and then I copied that, and that. That's like six flying power in the air straight there. Like that's still significant board presence. So just this uh, top end is just so nice together. But just the way this deck is put together, it's just I love it. I, I just freaking love it. Like bang, all this to all this cheap interaction, some uh, less conditional interaction in the three drop slot, and then nothing in the four drop slot, and then yeah then just bang into our finishes so just cheap interaction and some uh sneaky fun finishes it's just such a fun deck um now sideboard as i said we've got three more shark typhoons because it's just fantastic in some matches um a lot of black base decks can't answer it uh it's good in the rogues matchup because it can't be countered you got another Lock Me Serpent, because in some games you don't want the Shark Typhoon. Like against Gruel, I'll usually take out the Shark Typhoon, bring in the Lock Me Serpent. This is a bit slow. This is something that they basically can't kill. Um, we've got a Mystical Dispute, helps in Rogues and other control lists. Midnight Clock, again, helps with Rogues. Four Negates, helps with Rogues, other control lists. Duress, helps with Rogues, other control lists. And two Cling to Dust, which helps with Rogues. <laughs> um, Helps with Ragdoss. Um, it's just a really useful card to have access to at the moment. Um, so you're noticing a theme here in the sideboard. So what I've noticed with this deck so far is um, your initial setup against Gruul is pretty favourable. Um, so most of the games I've played with this have been against Gruul. The first game I played with this was against Gruul. I absolutely butchered the deck round one. I had no idea what I was doing. And it all sort of clicked for me towards the end of that game, and then I just dominated the next two games. Um, I really have not struggled against Gruel with this. Um, I do very minimal sideboarding, like I take out a Mystical Dispute, a Shark Typhoon, and a single Sublime Epiphany, just because it's a little bit slow. Bring in Lockmere and a couple of Negates, and that's it. I was bringing in Cling to Dust to get some potential life gain, but I really don't think that's uh, good enough to warrant cutting something else. Um, but yeah, your initial setup is very good against creature-based decks. Um, as you'll see, you can even win against Rakdos, which is meant to be a pretty bad matchup for these decks. Um, so you need a lot more tech in the sideboard against uh, the other big deck in the format, Rogues, and against other controlly lists. Uh, so hence the, uh, the theme that you might have seen in the sideboard there. Um, so having played it a bit, I'm really tempted to change these fields of ruin into crawling barons just to have another threat in the late game can be pretty helpful sometimes i wonder if you could copy this with um sublime epiphany uh, sorry not this copy crawling barons and what would happen i'm not entirely sure what would happen but i really want to find out now that i mentioned it but field of ruin can be interesting um you can if you're really desperate use it as color fixing for yourself because you can uh, search up a land um, and it can be helpful against certain decks that have bad mana bases like Rakdos. Unfortunately, I don't get to demonstrate this in the match you're about to see because, um, you know, it just didn't work like that. But uh, yeah, God, I've been uh, rambling for 10 minutes already. I just, I love this deck, guys. But anyway, let's uh, jump into the game and let the fun begin. 
So this hand is okay, but obviously we need to draw more lands. Um, we got really unfortunate in our previous game and lost the third round to our uh, Manus group. Um, you guys are probably not going to see that game, unfortunately, because the client crashed three or four times during it, so it's not even, uh, it's not even great footage. Uh, are we up against Rakdos? Be the worst possible matchup for us. Anyway, let's see how we go. Yep, nothing I can do about that. That's my hand. This is my hand. Don't take the sublime epiphany, it's so far away from mattering. Okay. Do take the sublime epiphany, I guess. Oh. Isn't this fun, guys? Yep. It's taking the serpent, it's better because it's uh, recursive. Isn't this a fun way to play a game with magic? Just having your hand picked apart. And missing land drops. Isn't this such fun? Might as well counter that, because it's going to take a card from our hand anyway, which will of course be a counter spell. No shortage of them at the moment though. I drown better for the time being. So we'll just trade off the cards they know about. There's no reason not to. Set a stop in case we get to end step and want to scry. So I don't want them to see my hand, but if I let this resolve, they can't take anything. And at this point, the card advantage is probably important. It also means I can just scry, get a bit more value. I mean, I prefer a black source, but you know. It is what it is. Again, set a stop. Good one to counter, saves us some damage. Does mean we don't get to scry. Just two decks staring at each other.
drop the Heartless Act. So it doesn't matter if we counter it or not, like either way we're discarding a card. This way we keep our mana open. I assume they bring this back in the next turn. So I was thinking of casting Sublime Epiphany, but since we've joined this, we'll definitely cast this instead. And just hold Essence Scatter open for their Cruxer. Oh, I cracked that so quickly. Because we're going to counter it here. I mean, this is where we start losing the can't advantage war and get ground out if we can't play something to the board soon. Next so they know about the Drown, but the Essence Scatter is the less useful one, so that's what they're going to go with here. Obviously hard casting this would be amazing, but that means they can get their crocs active. So I think it's worth um Timmy holds the dead. Sure. So I'm just going to make a 5-5 five five here. Like, I'd love to play it, but I really need to keep up my, uh, I need to keep open my counter spell tunnel. That's fine, at least I drew a card off it. Obviously I would have loved to keep that in play. Oh, the lag. I'm going to blow up their temple here. Um, I guess they can just fetch up another swamp if they really want to, can't they? So yeah, that didn't accomplish much. But yeah, the uh, Rakdos mana base is a little bit clunky, so I don't mind just trying to punish that. I think I'm better off just holding up a drawer and keeping more mana open. So I was really hoping to keep the camp, the shark token and be able to copy it with Sublime Epiphany to start putting pressure on them. So I guess lesson learned, um, I really just need to hard cast the shark token. I could have just let them have, cro have crops before I turn and then kill it with Drown in the Lock. So 
So we're going to use this now, because uh, the graveyard's getting kind of empty. This isn't going to get any better. You know? It's fine. Any kind of action would be really nice right now. So we are about to get boinked for six, which sucks. But we are about to gain four as well. Oh, that was a waste. Okay, so that's their graveyard gone. So be at least one or two turns before we need to worry about Cruxer again, hopefully. So I feel like they have a stomp from how this is hanging. Uh, can we draw some, like, something meaningful, please? This is actually getting really frustrating. Drop this disruption. Get a bit of a scry on here. So much mana. Oh my god. The flood is real. So much end step activity. Just cannot draw a threat to save ourselves. But even a crawling barrens would be something right now, you know? I'll draw a card here and see what I want to discard. So just considering my options here. I'm gonna heartless act this murderous rider. So 
So I've got four life coming up, so I don't need to stress too much about this. I'd rather use my mana efficiently and take the double scry. Actually, Mystical Dispute's pretty useless at this point, isn't it? Yep, so I've got 11 mana, the exact amount I need for Great Shark into Epiphany. Yep, they're definitely going to stomp here. They're going to try and ambush me with it somehow. So we're just going to take our strike here, buffer our life total a little bit. That's pretty nice. Cool, if they're gonna fast turn, we'll just draw. Kill off one of these tokens. Call that a turn. So it looks like they're just going to try and chip us down with this guy. Get us into stomp range. Do I want another land? Probably not at the moment. All counter spells were always good. There it is. Do they have the second? So they don't have enough mana for another, um... Don't have enough mana for another stump. Is there an unmanned permanent I want to return? No. But I do want a, uh, token. But I do want a draw a card. Counter the Hagra Molly. Copy the Great Shark. And I will draw a card. Yeah, that Bone Crusher is twice counted. Yep, touch all my things. We're gonna scry here, because we may need to pop this for life. Another counter spell is quite nice, to be in the position we're in now. So I'm going to pop this for life now to avoid any shenanigans from 
potential for a Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, they could wait until I pop this and stomp me with the trigger on the stack. I want to avoid that, obviously. This Mystical Dispute is basically blank cardboard at this point. I really wish I had bottomed it. does fill their graveyard crocs are obviously. Hopefully they're gonna try and bring one back. Punish them with the dispute. No longer blank cardboard. Another one. Oh, so good. So good. Yeah. And they can't bring back Croxer at the moment. They don't have enough in their yard. Now they can, but they shouldn't be able to bring back Croxa and deal with three sharks. I don't know why they paid four to kill that one instead of just paying one to kill the token. Now I've got the drown in the lock there, I probably don't need Castle Vantress. Okay, they scoop it up. Epic. Oh, we were so behind for so long. Uh, Cling to Dust, good here. Duress, good here. Typhoon's pretty good here. Do I want the Serpent? Okay, mystical dispute, not as good. I think I cut at least one epiphany. Since I brought in the typhoons. If the typhoons are my win con. Okay, but Lock Me Serpent can hit the graveyard. I don't mind it as a one off for that reason. Jwari Disruption, a little bit less good. 4, 8, 15, 17, 21, 22, 23. Uh, no, I don't really want to cut it. This is a pretty uh, mana thirsty deck. This is expensive and they fill their yard anyway, and it's a bit less useful on the draw. Um, but there are a lot of things that I just want to counter. I really don't know what to sideboard there. I've probably done a bad job. Obviously, uh, hitting stuff in the graveyard at a premium in this will lead on this trio. The 
probably hit cling to dust here. Jari disruption. So they've probably got an agonizing remorse they're trying to protect for next turn. And or they're just trying to uh, lock me out of lands. The amount of our targeted discard is like really. I'm gonna fire this off now. It's really punishing how much discard. So now, if they want to get rid of my thing to dust, they have to take, hit it out of my graveyard. And so they have put themselves at a disadvantage in terms of cards. Yep. So they still opt for that anyway. It's, look, it's not a bad play because it's such a good card against them. Okay, missing land drops is, particularly this early, is really punishing. So I may just need to take the double scry just to stay in this game. I can't afford to fall further behind. They're going to be on four lands, and I'm on two. Drop the epiphany. Beautiful. So at this point in the game, I can I can afford to use a removal spell on this. I do take two damage, and I've got a pretty healthy life total at the moment, and I will gain life from the tome. And essence scatter can uh, stop an ETV trigger up the Proxa, for example. More land, beautiful. Kills their graveyard for Kroxa. That's nice. Removal spells they don't have access to and lands they don't have access to. And they've missed a land drop, so... It's all good news for us. Um, okay, since we've drawn that, we can probably afford to spend a removal spell here. Another land, beautiful. Oh, yep, let's go to main phase. So we really just want to curve into Shark Typhoon. Destroy this. Heartless Act is going to be much less useful for this card in the future because it comes back with the counter and our opponent is land screwed so it's sort of a repeat of we got a bit screwed last game and I mean we were early this game as well and now they're on the receiving end of that it's put us in a very good position my computer's just having a little spaz I couldn't hit the resolve button there Sorry about that, guys. Just had some uh, pop-up notifications. So we're just going to slam Shark Typhoon at the moment. We're pretty far ahead. They can bring back Croxa next turn and that will suck for us. 
punished. So we really need to draw into a removal spell now. Punished hard. Should have just waited another turn. If they scry top, I'll blow up the temple. Okay, they don't scry top. I'm still gonna blow up the temple. Oh, another shark type on top would have actually been nice there. So I'm going to draw a card here. Make a little token. Hopefully find an answer to Croxa. There it is. Okay. Sorry, bit of lag. Mouse cursor is not cooperating. Uh, that's fine. The mouse cursor is not cooperating, so I couldn't uh, get to the button to click fast there. So I'm hoping they try to bring back the Phoenix here. We can essence scatter it, then we can eliminate the Croxa. No such luck. Do they have their own cling to dust here to get rid of my cling to dust? Okay, so they're just stomping my token. That's fine, I don't mind them getting that value. I mean, I'm getting a fair bit of value here myself. And end turn, we're gonna get rid of Croxa. They scoop it up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Shark Typhoon. So there you have it guys. Uh, obviously I've only got unlucky in that last round, which is, you know, it happens. Uh, we got a bit unlucky with lands in the first game and even in the second game. So, you know, that that is how it is. And as I said, the game immediately before that, I got um, shut out of the game in round three because I didn't draw lands. But, you know, that's the game that we play. Um, you know, props to our opponent playing the best that they could. Um, you know, sucks that they didn't get there with lands in the end. Uh, it was really nice to get the win. It was a fun game. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Uh, as I rambled on and on and on about in the intro, I love this deck. I've had so much fun with it. You should definitely expect to see a bit more of it. Um, as I said, I might uh, make a few little tweaks, like putting in Crawling Barracks, for example. But yeah, look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Stay brilliant.